The subway platform had only a modest crowd. This wasn't unusual, the peak hours having just passed. A few random folks milled around waiting for the next train. Some in suits, some in casual outfits, some with faces buried in newspapers, while a far greater number were glued to their phones. Judd had a disdain for all of them. It wasn't a fierce emotion. He didn't feel emotions of any kind, really. He felt physical sensations, but no love, no compassion, nor any real fear or anger. He was a pragmatist at heart, he reasoned. He didn't trouble himself with feelings. He simply calculated the easiest path forward, the things that would give him the best sensation, and without consideration for these petty others. He was, after all, a pragmatist, though the world would much prefer to call him a sociopath. Judd waited for his train with his normal blank, soulless, emotionless stare. He picked the off hours to take the train so he would be less physically repulsed by an overabundance of these sheep we commonly call people. Being around them was a necessary evil he did his best to mitigate. He couldn't experience emotions, as it were, though he was reasonably certain contempt was one that resonated with him. He could understand it on a deep level. For instance, the late thirty-something red-headed man standing next to him would certainly inspire such an emotion. Judd stared down at him, taking in his features. Everything about this man was just not Judd, and therefore very wrong. From his short red hair to his neatly trimmed mustache and thick framed glasses, <laughs> to be nearsighted, this man inspired outright disgust. Judd's stare unwittingly inspired the attention of the man. Upon turning and seeing Judd's stare, his face lit up like the bright glare of the sun. Judd realized he'd made a mistake. Hi, my name's Marty. Marty Feldman. How you doing, friend? I'm in the insurance game. Judd could only choke back his bile as the plucky little man began his obnoxious sales pitch. Friend, I couldn't help but notice you had your eye on this term life insurance policy here. I look at you, and I see a man who could definitely... Judd dearly wanted this man to shut up. If he could have, he would have liked to just grab the steel trash can next to the support column and beat this idiot senseless until the talking stopped. However, there were witnesses around. He knew better than to do things in front of witnesses. He'd fought in front of witnesses growing up. It just led to the involvement of the authorities, which meant, at the very least, a cessation of things that pleased his physical impulses. What he did to the neighborhood critters? He did those things in private, and it allowed him to keep getting thrills that way. Now, for the low rate of $65 a month, you can insure yourself for a period expiring in... Thinking about the things he'd done to animals years ago started to awaken an excitement in him. He wondered if perhaps doing something to end this man, this insipid little man and his pointless little smile, might not give him a rush like he'd never quite felt before. Even the thought was causing his pulse to quicken. Marty continued on. And I looked at you and thought, Boy, oh boy, my buddy here is the sort of man who needs that sort of flexibility in policy. Am I right, buddy? That this insipid thing would pretend to know his mind only firmed Judd's resolve. He had to kill this man. He had only to puzzle out how. Beating him to death with a trash can, while satisfying, would certainly land him a lengthy prison sentence. While it had its comparative merits versus continuing to listen to Marty, Judd figured that the chance to kill again was important enough to make this look like an accident. The distant approach of the train gave him the perfect idea. He could accidentally shove Marty in front of it. He would get the chance to get a last look at the terror in Marty's face, know that he caused it, and then feign guilt over the matter. After all, who could lock up a distraught man over a clear accident? Boy, I sure hope we don't get in a train wreck before we sign this policy. Am I right, buddy? Judd waited, holding his breath and eagerly timing things out. His pulse was racing and he was getting the rush of his life. 
this obnoxious red-headed thing would have the incomparable horror of being Judd's first victim. He could see the train pulling into the stop. He made ready. Suddenly, there was a seeming explosion of papers next to him. The damned fool had somehow sent his packet of worthless insurance forms flying. Ah, my forms! Hold on, buddy, let me get these. He might have saved himself the effort for all it was worth. Judd took a step towards him as the train drew near. Marty stood up from gathering the forms and whipped back around quickly. Unwittingly, he rammed into Judd, throwing him off balance and straight over the edge of the platform. Judd stood, focused on the oncoming train as Marty plaintively yelled, Buddy! Oh my god! Someone stop the train! The train slammed into Judd, killing him in a matter of milliseconds. The police questioned everyone extensively. The stories all matched. It was a freak accident. The short little red-headed man had inadvertently bumped someone he was selling insurance to. Doubtless the poor sap was helping him pick up the papers. Martin Feldman, the unfortunate insurance salesman, seemed so distraught. The police assured him it was just an accident. Witnesses were eventually allowed to leave, and the service resumed at the station. Marty made his way out of the station, his normally bright and beaming face wearing a look of total horror and grief. He exited the station and turned down an alley. Out of sight of everyone, the emotion drained from his face and melted away. The sunny little red-headed man now sported a blank, soulless, emotionless stare. He was a pragmatist, you see. And as a pragmatist, he viewed all walls as breakable, fourth ones included. He deadpanned and stared at you. To fool those down below, or you for that matter, is an effortless task. An amateur like him, it's a little trickier. But you saw how easy I did it. Now imagine how you would fare against a seasoned pro like me. He turned back away to the street, a world of people he held in disdain, and he was master of them all.